good. And Mitch, well, we are moving into Mirage and Mazalai. I think this is their week. If I think if they drop this game, it was zero and four. I think that's guaranteed to be a team that's going to be knocked out, especially since they only have, I think, five more games in total to play. And other teams are looking uh, pretty flawless from here on out. And their their road doesn't get any easier than what they started out with. It's only going to get harder as time goes on. And for Bren, I mean, they, they beat Tiger. They beat them mm -hmm. too. Uh, they beat them on Overpass. This is one of the maps, uh, you know, within the series that they're able to be successful on. But let's see now. As they're starting off on the CT side, Bren going to be looking to pick up the pistol around as Mazalai on the T side and invest into some smoke or a smoke and a, uh, a flash here. It looks like it might be a hit towards B. Just going for some early underpass control. One's going to be spotted out by Papa Chulo and Ja. I like how he's just jump spotting this as well. They have no utility to counter this except Wits with the smoke. And well, Wits, he's going to be over at the, the A site. Yeah, Mazalai are slowing it down, looking for the mid control to start. They don't fully want to commit to B off the bat. The one for one trades down. Pro spots the player in underpass, and now it's commitment. Rushing into the B site. Jazz got to find all these kills as they push on forward, swinging through, not finding a single head just yet. Eventually connecting, though. And with that, they are miles in the lead. Brand should be able to close this out. The Glock's now up close. Wits needs to be very careful. Double dinks. Luckily, the wall was saving him, I think, on one of those shots. And they blitz on through, go into the CT spawn, and straight to the A site. Cut off. Pros at least managed to spot one and can hold the cross on sight. The Zilk really has to take the fight, but no, he had a smoke in his back pocket. So that's going to allow them crossed over and get a bomb plant. Good recovery by Mazalai, I gotta say. That's a good recovery, but can it be a good win? Zilkenberg. Again, rounds off some shots towards Pompachulo, who I guess is going to rotate towards jungle. They have a player over towards stairs. Pros going to be there. Both players tucked away in sight. The kit has been picked up here for Papachulo. Now they're going to push in together. Again, the 1v1 right off the bat. Zilkenberg wins that trade. Kit now on the ground. 15 seconds left to go. Pro's going to have to pick up the pace here and get these two kills before he even go for the bomb. He's being shot from behind. Zilkenberg plays in towards CT. And that's why I'd say play that one pretty perfectly towards the end of the two-on-two. -two. And they take the pistol around. Just touching on the veto a little bit, uh, when we look down towards Overpass, I mean, this is where Bran had that good showing versus Tiger, obviously beating them. They had a 16 to 11 over uh, against Vici. They lost that game, but quite a close one overall. And then Inferno, you remember, they very nearly beat Beyond. We were casting that 19 to 17. They went to an overtime. And with that, I mean, at least a 2-1 should be possible. I don't really see Mazalai having a huge advantage when it comes to Mirage, as I said. When it comes down to firepower, I think Brand do take the, the cake. But there is a possibility that we'll be able to see Mazalai uh, come out on top. But if we do, they'll struggle to close out the series, I think. Yeah, and I just think ahead to the future, right? Like, you need to always beat Bren convincingly, for in my eyes, for you to have a good chance against your Vici, Invictus, Tyloo. Like, that's three games... They can almost expect a loss, at least from what we see in their performance. I don't want to say they can't beat them, but we need to see like a completely different team today. And I think this map alone will give us a good indicator if they can bounce back throughout all the rest of their matches they have left to go in the uh, in the group stage. Well, let's see, they're going to move over towards the B side. There will be three players here waiting. There's two Deagles and a Scout, so I'm a little bit worried. Utility will come through. Papa Chulo, I, I, this is like a one and done spot, if anything. And yeah, I knew it. It's a nice little shot. Oh, he's and Eric responding onto this one. The scout left for Wits. And he will fall. And, and you know when it comes to this this op battle head to head between Wits and Zilkenberg, I don't really know who I favor. I think Wits, funny enough, has been playing better. I know he had one good map, but I feel like he's in general played a little bit slow. And then you look at Zilkenberg and he's just not really been able to get anything going. Yeah, like the thing was, we gave him a little bit of faith coming into the start of this tournament. Uh, the reality for Mazalai is there's only, I think there's only three teams. Uh, yeah, there's probably only three teams I think they could beat. Um, you look at Divine Vendetta, who they lost to in their opening game, Bren, and Lucid Dream. Other than that, I don't think they've got much of a chance that those are the three teams they need to beat to make the playoffs. They, they haven't beaten them. Um, they already lost to Divine Vendetta. And I think if they lose to Bren in this series, which is likely, that is most of their hope of making playoffs completely gone are they gonna turn around papa chulo I mean, uh, papi just doesn't care he's like if i can't see you you can't see me that is how it works right i think so yeah yeah 
It's like the electrons. If you don't look at them, they just stop existing. Is that like Schrodinger's cat then, kind of? Sort of. I, there's like a theory that that uh, basically if, if no one's observing a certain part, like if everyone in New York was to look one way, that the city behind them would turn into like a soup of, of electrons. It's to do with the... Uh, when you observe an electron, it um, becomes static. Like you dictate what it looks like. It's it's very complicated, but so yeah, it's, it's like cool. if it's a like, tree falls in the forest, there's no one yeah, around to hear it. Exactly. Does it make sound? If no one's looking at a building, is it a building? <laughs> sort of thing. Like it solidifies when you. It's kind of creepy. Then imagine at every second of the day, someone's looking at. Wait, because that doesn't make sense. Because I'm not looking at the backdrop behind me, but it still exists. If I, if, I, yeah. if I just turn around and touch it without looking at it, it's still there. Yeah, but it's like, it's it, it's super, it, it is basically like Schrodinger's cat in a way that, um, I can't remember the exact logic, it's been years since I looked into it, but it's essentially anything behind you that no one's observing in any way turns to like a, a soup because you don't actually know where the electrons are positioned. In the same way, like if you measure how fast an electron's going, you actually slow it down and stop it. Um, well, that's some See? philosophical stuff that I my mind can't handle this early in the morning, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm explaining it very poorly because it's so that, early. That as well. <laughs> we'll try makes later. It difficult. We just see the gun <laughs> round come in for Brad, and it's going all the way up Derek. Two quick kills. Naisugu's going to respawn. It's a second. I, I would imagine he should have been able to get that one. He does get dinked up, and Jaw's going to finish it off. So finally, the first round for Brad, and it comes in on the gun round. The Mazalai's still going to be able to buy up either way. Zilkenberg going to go straight to the AWP, but so will Wits. And then I think this is going to be uh, interesting to see who's who's showing up on the given day. We know how good Zilkenberg can be. But he hasn't been that good with the Ops so far. So, I don't know. I want to see him step up a little bit more. I want to see the uh, the good old classic Zilkenberg. I, I swear, didn't... I mean, Blood can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but like, didn't we cast him in our first event ever together? Back in Kuala Lumpur, I feel like we did. I feel like he was on some team, like him and Machine Gun together. Say it again for me. Oh, for the Indian team. Okay. Neck break. Oh, man. Man, good times. First event I ever met, Blah. We, uh, we hit it off instantly. We knew it was love. We knew it was meant to be. I was expecting you to get a little bit jealous. Maybe that's why you're not talking here, Mitch. Give me the silent treatment. I'm used to it. I've got a I'm girlfriend. Just... <laughs> He's probably 10 back then, that as well. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's uh, it's pretty close. I just want to stop talking about soup, though, because I haven't eaten. So I, No, I... you made a mistake. I had a bagel. Intermittent fasting, mate. No. I dropped those kilos before uh, beach weather. Oh, wait. Can't really go to the beach. <laughs> can't even go to the beach. <laughs> that doesn't but... stop some people, but... Yeah, you know. that's true. Especially if you're in uh, Florida or the UK. Yeah. So they're all grouping up towards A to hit the attack here from Azalei, but they're leaving Nuez over towards Underpass to kind of catch him out on the rotate. Smoke's going to be going in, so a very set play. Delayed nade out of Pro going to come through and connect pretty decent. Nuez does catch out Jaws. He looks to peek out in the middle, get the other information. Pro, though, I mean, in towards Palace is going to be tough. If they peek around this corner, Sugu should have an easy kill. And Pro tries to rush forward. The bomb's going to be planted for short. Papachula comes in and only gets one, but Zilkenberg's just not going to be moved, and this is going all the way of Mazalai. Yeah, nice and clean. Derek's got to pull it all off, at least a bit more damage to Bartak. He looks for a small bit more. The flash even makes him lose 50, 60 HP. And if only he hadn't have been so low, he could have went for this in the 1v2. Opportunity to take another weapon away. So good tags him up even more now down to 15 and he's looking to lurk around in case they chase But luckily Mazalai are gonna allow him to save this weapon. They think he's earned it. Go on. I Don't know if that would actually do damage would it? I feel like that wall's sure. quite sick. Oh, never mind <laughs> Miscalculated his HP there It happens I mean wasn't there uh, I keep seeing this all over for some reason, Instagram, and I don't know what this was, what event, but Ents all dying to the bomb. I don't remember that. No? Okay, I thought it was like relatively recent. Uh, maybe I just missed it. I, I, the one thing I do remember about the bomb is uh, most recently that G2 game a few months back where they just couldn't find it. What, which, which, which time? 
Which time? That's a sad statement. Or sad question. But I think it was... Um, it? I, can't, I can't even remember what game it was. I just remember seeing G2 running around the lower bomb side of B. Going like, where's the bomb? And it was there. And uh, they ran away to go to A thinking it was planted. Oh, it was just madness. Silly boys. I mean, at least they made a meme for themselves. That's the one thing I will give to G2, man. Every time. So th their orgs always in the Twitch chat and just self-deprecating the whole time. I mean, that's 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 Carlos for you. It's not even Carlos. So I remember at one point someone was like, yo, is this Carlos? And he was like, how dare you? How dare you insult me like that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, nice little headshot of pro. Good Molotov on the wits. Have to transition. But they don't actually hold the angle to get the kill onto him off the back of that. So... Not sure exactly why for Sugu, but the rotation now over towards the B site was going to be Jaw waiting. The gun's going to be rescued for Pro. So now they got an AK in their hands. So there's a realistic chance Bren can pull this back, especially since they're rotating all their players to help defend this push. It was a window for Mazalai to capitalize off of this, but that window has been slammed shut. But can they get these kills though? Now comes into the question here for Bren. Well, yes, they can. The pistols coming out on top pretty massively. Nade on to Jao. Won't even do that much because Zilkenberg's got the op, so he'll get the damage done completely. And so 1v2 still. Not easy. Not in the slightest. He's got a P250. He could pull out. And coming into these players with the AWP, I think I'd rather oh, have the P2. Oh, he almost hit that. That is very close. And speaks to how good of an opera he is. You know, that shot was not easy to hit. I know he didn't get to fire, but he definitely had the lineup for it. Point one of a second later, that player was dead, and he's in a 1v1. But uh, it's just a hard clutch to win out 1v3 with an op on the B site. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, nice position on job. They don't even check towards bench. And again, the Deagles really shining in this region and how like decimating they can be. Get him into the right hands, you hit a couple of you know good shots, and you can really snowball that round in which they did. Not two to four, Mazalai, they're gonna be on the save. They're gonna not have a deagle on their side. They will have a couple of U250s and a tech nine. Smoke comes in, flashbang as well to get around the corner. They're just looking for the plant. To win this round would be insane. The extra money on the side is gonna help out. Papa Chula just line him up and knocking him down. That's two already. Artex gonna fall. Papa Chula, does he want the ace? There's two left. You got one in sandwich. You got one towards a ramp. Why do I keep talking about food? <laughs> just keep bringing it up. Well, down towards the ramp, or as a lot of people call it, pizza. Zilkenberg is just holding down with the P250, looking to spray away, just like you'd spray a pizza with a little bit of uh, drizzle, like the uh, the chili drizzle sometimes. What a shot! Pinpoint accuracy. I bet he could hit a pepperoni from a mile away. I hate you. <laughs> oh. The, um, by the way, Jason, just as we were on the topic of electrons and all that sort of stuff, do you know when the first theory uh, of the atom originated? Like what, Where what, or when? What year, roughly? Well, it's got to be before World War II. Yeah, quite a bit before. Yeah, uh, 1838. Quite a bit before that as well. It was uh, oh, 370 wow. BC or oh, wow. before that. A guy called Democritus. It's the best story. I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a couple of minutes. Out when we get to an eco round, we can talk about it. I mean, you you don't need to because you're just a massive nerd. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, you say you don't read, and yet clearly you're just studying textbooks over there. <laughs> Spam nice. comes in on Tanuas towards B, and it connects with a little bit of damage, between 15 in total. Papachula getting burnt up as he tries to get out of the window. A little fire drill going on. Even the nade oh, directly in front of Nuez. It's a pretty even damage being traded. I think it was a slight favoring to Bren. The bomb's still back towards the top of the middle. They're actually trying to get someone in towards window, which I don't think they've done so far. Wits is going to be here. As he's going to try to protect from the other side. So they're going to go A, and they're going to use machine gun inside of window to catch... Okay, or go B and use machine gun inside of window to catch rotations. Yeah, I'm most certainly looking for that B hit. I, I like the position machine guns in, but they need to be successful on this push forward, and running right into three players isn't going to help. The rotates are going to be late coming. Like, at most, he probably just finds pro. Maybe Papachillo through spawn. And as the push comes in, Ja tucked in the corner. He gives away his position. The spray doesn't catch... Oh, actually, it does catch a new as a little bit delayed. But still, the frags are going their way. 
Machine Gun eventually strikes. They now know he's coming behind from Kitchen. Derek has to go out in the open. Now they know where Machine Gun is. One HP left. And easy pickings with the USP. Derek deletes him. Yeah, as I said, the onus wasn't on Machine Gun there to do more. Like, at most, in the position he was in, he finds one, maybe two if the stars align perfectly. But Brennan already rotated heavily towards the B site with three players in position. If those, if that four-man push doesn't work out, you've already lost the round. There's nothing else you can do. Can't rely on Machine Gun to pull it. They're also getting the grind on here, too. I mean, it was... Is it four? Yeah, it was 3-1, 4-1 in favor of Mazalai, but it's starting to really pull back the CT side of Brennan. Again, we've seen a lot of success when it comes to, I guess, most maps in this region. It's it's very T-sided. I was expecting maybe some more out of Mass Live. They're going to be on the eco this time, so not really expecting necessarily to win this, though they do have two Deagles, so there's always a chance. Always a chance. I mean, that's always a, a sad chance. reality. Yeah, the, uh, the funny thing about it, right, about the whole Adam situation is it was discovered by a Greek philosopher, Democritus, who was just the smartest dude ever. And uh, unfortunately, when the Library of Alexandria got burnt down, we lost all of his books. The names of them still exist. Like, so we know it, the, it was called Theory of the Atom or something like that. Um, but the book itself is lost. But the, the way he found it is so cool. He was sat in, a, in, a, in his house, right, a, a ray of sunlight coming through the window, and there's dust. And the dust, you know the way dust moves, it goes down, up, like it messes around randomly. It moves very unpredictably. And there was no breeze. So he was like, well, why, why does it flutter in the way it does? Like if the air was empty, it would just fall straight, right? And so he, uh, he realized there must be lots of small things that are bouncing off it, like a sea of little things that you can't see. But the a irony sea of, of dust it was, he can't see. Well, exactly, of, of even smaller things. The funny thing was it comes from the word atomos, which is Greek for indivisible but obviously we know it is divisible so that they kind of got that wrong but you can't blame them really can you I think it was a it was a pretty solid period it didn't change for like two thousand years it just everyone was that that was all the, and they also thought he was wrong so poor chap should have just googled it exactly honestly i think you know we're all so much smarter than them because they never thought of googling it idiots i would imagine what the uh, the latin name of google would have been I would have been Probably uh, something to do with like random no, no. words for now. Encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be the eco round one. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess lost from Azali. Wits. Jeez. Okay. I mean, we know he can play well. I wasn't sure what wits would show up today. Two quick kills to shut down this push out of middle. I mean, the bomb's still back towards T spawn, so they're gonna go for the pickup, on, or they're not going to pick it up, actually. I thought Zilkenberg was going to secure it. He's actually trying to watch for any sort of A push, which Papachulo has done. Clean round, actually. Very fast round for Bren. Zilkenberg's going to respawn, however. Keep the pressure on towards the A site. Keep the defenders guessing. I think Machine Gun's in underpass, I'm guessing. Actually, no, he's up in ladder room. So he's actually going to make the this pincer move on towards the B site. Jaw's going to be waiting. Wits is even rotating away. This actually could be good. If they get this kill quickly and then push in towards the site. Maybe get a Molotov to push that kitchen position away, that window. And we could see actually the round still go Mazalai's way. It's all about this first kill. If Jaw can get a kill and fade away, then this should be should be their round to take. Well, machine gun at least opens it up. They've got a chance to get to site. They just have to cross wits. A flash and Molly still in play. Hopefully they'll be deployed before they swing through. Molly to the window, so they know that Wits should be towards the door. Machine Gun looks like he wants to peek it, and he wins the fight as well. Now down to just Pro, retrieves an AK, and looks for the 1v2. A Molly and a Smoke left. The Molly towards the back, it's not quite going to reach in. The Machine Gun, the spray, even blind connects, but Nuez luckily finds the head before a few more bullets found their mark. And so 5-5 five to five we go. Azalei are doing well. They're definitely keeping it tight. And a really good comeback into that round as well. Got to give props to Machine Gun, who we were crediting earlier on as being a fantastic secondary opera. But there you're seeing what he can do with even the rifle. I don't know how I feel about that round, though. It was a five on three. They get two kills right off the bat. I, I feel like they shouldn't have lost that round. Like, Wits ends up missing a shot onto a low HP player near the van or I guess towards the bench side of the van. 
that, that should have been the round. I, I don't think anyone out there can really disagree with me. I think there was definitely some mistakes made, but obviously credit to Mazalai to capitalize off the mistakes. I don't want to knock the achievement of winning that round, but they shouldn't have gotten that. It's still gonna be five a piece, however. One is gonna be tight on both sides. Whoever wins this round might get themselves another to follow up with. Pro is already gonna be pretty much dislodged from this fight. Yes, he put a smoke down himself. So I think he's trying to peek. Mm. Or one sided smoke. Also, just ready for the Molotov to come through, right? True. And make sure he's not gonna be ticked up on his way. You're probably gonna get spammed too. Oh, unlucky there. Ja with the peek straight through apartments. The problem is that robs them of a lot of information. At this point, it, they could be starting to shift walk up. So Derek has to go and peek that. He sees no one here. Smoke comes over, though, towards the kitchen. That really convinces them it's going to be a B hit. So they stay two man stacked up. The A site very much weakened. Wits doesn't know a player can already be close left. So Zilkenberg gets a free kill. And now he's saying, Poppy, come on. Thought you're watching that, bro. But he was looking in towards the window as he comes to check on the A site and see how much damage is being done. He sees exactly how great this infestation is. There's T's everywhere. And because of that, Brand decide, let's just move house. Stick towards the B site. Accept our fate and come back another day. I mean, smart call to save. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's so frustrating, I think. To, to be in Wits' position and then just not expect a player to come up from connector. Like, he had the angle held towards a ramp. I think there's a person coming out of a, a palace that would probably have eventually caught him. And that was a round that they, they if they won, they could be up to seven from. And now because Mazalai get it, they get it cleanly without losing a single player. Their economy stabilizes a bit. And they can be looking to take the, the first half lead. Pulling on up, pulling on in. Mazalai looking to begin this beautiful best of three with a, a victory on their map pick. Look, six rounds, as we said when we were uh, previously looking at this map, 50-50 isn't too bad if they end up on an 8-7 scoreline. I think that's pretty achievable for both teams then when they swap over to the opposing side. Bren, probably a team that, that strikes me as having the better T side versus Mazalai. Well, most days. But if Mazalai do manage to connect this you know, get their ninth round on the board. It's a long road, but I mean, they should be on seven here. Then that's a, a beautiful little start. They've spotted the AK. Sogu, though, on the swing. He shoulder peaked first, and that was a mistake because Pro waited for him to come back, pre fired it, and there's an extra weapon to be retrieved. Oh, if Papachulo ran quicker, I mean, obviously, in that situation, you're not going to. Would have been able to catch the bomb and T-spawn. This is the first time I think this entire event we've seen a person boosted up on the box in sight. But Wits is not even going to have a pistol behind this. So maybe he can stop the planter. There's still a lot of time left. So even if he if he does, they can pick the bomb back up. They're not expecting to be here. And there we go. The first kill is going to come through. That's out of jaw. And Wits, it's not going to work out. Bartek flanked and played from a different position. Now to Pro and Poppy. Two on three. I mean, I think, I think Poppy's got to make the play first. Like, Pro is basically locked in. Poppy can't really even peek out because he gives his position up. And they're just going to have to save, I guess, these uh, these weapons. Put into the next round so he can afford up and off. And there we go. 7-5. to five. It was still costly, though. And even more costly now with Pro getting that kill. So the round that they had clean before means nothing. You're going to have to have a short exit for Nuez. Possibility to peek him and, and take him down, but they decide not to. And that's the right call. But yeah, you're 100% you're right, Jason. This is significant damage done by Bren. They walk out of it with two rifles, which is a great outcome for them. Obviously, Sogu came in with one, but still. Having those two allows them to... Man, they could even go for a double offset if, if they wanted to. Although, so far from Bren, I, I actually don't remember ever seeing a double off. Maybe I'm, I'm forgetting something, but... Well, here we go. I'm seeing it now. And I, I, yeah, I don't remember Ja having one. Maybe he did and I missed it. I don't we'll think so. I, I think you're right. I don't think we've seen it happen just yet. 
with that much know. money, it's, it's pretty tempting though, right? Uh, this late on in the half as well. Especially when you feel like nothing's really hitting and fortunately they lose one of the ops. Wits is going to die. Derek's going to fall and Jaws left alone. When he gets the first gun of Zilkenberg, he's going to need more than this. Takes down Newest. Maybe he should have had the op earlier on. That's two kills in the smoke to buy him some cover. They rotate it back towards the A site. Machine gun realizes, hey, A is open. They should be able to get a plant here. And will they expect Machine Gun just to be watching from CT? Oh, this is going to be bad. Pro's going to round the corner. Straight into an op. Even a second player is going to be there. They should know about this. And this is going to be an 8-5 eight, now. And as we said, you know, Mazzoli had the possibility to get up to nine rounds. Now it seems like it should be an unavoidable reality. The outcome pretty much determined by the fact that they only have one op saved over at most. And this late on, now when you're coming into the last two rounds, you're never really going to talk about the damage at this point. Yeah, you get two, three, four kills. Hell, it doesn't matter. Mazzoli with bomb plants and round wins can just keep buying. For Brent, it's all about bringing this up forward. They can get an M4 on Papi Chulo. Outside of that, and maybe Wits as well. Outside, we'll probably see a force buy up, actually, not the eco. It was, if Jad died, I think that'll force their hand to take pistols. But they need these next two rounds. They cannot allow this to go towards Mazalai. Two M4s, one dropped over by Jad as well, so it'll only be one weakness. And this is definitely workable. And again, what's so big about this is that Mazley haven't even won a map yet. Mm-hmm. So this would be their first map, and it would be their first, well, obviously winning of their choice. But they still have Overpass next, and I, I I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, thinking that Mazley will win the map. It's not over at all. And Wits has been having a rough game so far, I'd say. I mean, he's on seven yeah. kills. We saw a couple of missed shots that could have won them the rounds and changed the tide. I mean, you obviously had that amazing double kill in middle, and they ended up losing that 5v3. So any any progress he did have didn't seem to matter. I think the, the issue we're facing, though, is that, like, for Mazalai, it's hard to really estimate them properly because, okay, they look bad day one versus Divine Vendetta. Then they played Beyond, then they played D13. Those are damn hard teams to beat. Now they're finally playing at their level uh, versus a team that, yes, I would estimate is better than them, but that they have a chance against. I don't think you're I don't think you're a lunatic for saying that the opportunity is there. I see definitely a 2-1 for Bren either way, regardless of how this map but well, not regardless, I mean either a 2-0 or a 2-1. I think they'll win the series either way. Uh but for Mazla, yeah, this map would be huge for them. It gives them a chance to come back into the the tournament. Because they as we said, they need to win this game. If they lose, it's I mean, you're gonna rely on them beating a Vici, a Tylu, a Tiger, Invictus. They those are not teams they should compete against. If if a third map even comes out in those kind of series, it's a very bad sign for the team they're playing. I think maybe the Tiger one they can be a little bit more confident considering yeah, it's it's more of a domestic match, but I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Ja, it's gonna be under a lot of pressure. Wits there to help support him. I think Wits is gonna miss the shot and he gets tagged up and then he dies. Both players fall on the B site and Mazalai make that look all too easy. They don't even need machine gun. He's sitting here trying to take away the rest of the weapons. Nine to five, gonna be going Mazalai's way. Papa Chu is gonna get one kill, but one kill is not gonna win you around. Now Nuez knows exactly where you're gonna be and he's gonna watch for you to re peek back out. And Pro only has an SMG, MP9 over there. He's just hoping that someone pushes him and he can trade up for a rifle. But they have money to spend. I mean, this is 9-5. We're going to go into the last round. They do, obviously just need to buy one more time, which they can clearly do. Not even that. Wow. Well, yeah, it's a bad half for Bren, that's for sure. I might as well have done an amazing job of getting themselves up there. Machine gun. He had a great start to the half, and it's obviously continued the whole way through. And there you go. Our beautiful little drone showing off Machine Gun's Pro S. 12 flashbang grenades used. Couple mollies. This is decently enough using up his util, but it's all about the kills, really, isn't it? 15 enemies killed. 11 headshots. Accuracy is pretty damn high. We come into the last round here, Jason, with Bran having a mixed bag of utility and weaponry. They don't even have a kit. 
No one's gone in for one. I mean, they... <laughs> I can kind of understand it. Considering they haven't been able to even go for, like, really any retakes. Usually when the bomb gets planted, they're down, like, three or four players. Yeah. Bro, not in a bad position. He's gonna get one. We'll expect a second player to be there. Is Bartek's gonna rotate around? Doesn't get the weapon, unfortunately. Just backs away. And towards B apartments. I'm gonna go for the retake now. I think even using that smoke just to secure it, that's gonna be a trade I think uh, he'll be happy with. I'm pretty happy with as well. But it seems like they're still gonna be the execute towards the A site, and they're still leaving machine gun to lurk. I mean, his lurk has been fantastic. I think part of the points of. Or part of the reason they've been able to get so many rounds now on this attacking side. Our tech comes through, they're winning all the 1v1 battles, and that's, that's gonna be the 10 5. Oh, is it? I think you might have cursed it this time. So close to getting the bomb planter. Derek allows him away. It's like a movie. Those shots just running right past the player. As he bails out towards the ramp. Now a difficult retake. The nade deployed. Two players are... Well, I guess Zilkenberg isn't that low, but Bartak would be eliminated immediately by the nade. Luckily, it went towards the back of sight. Molly. A little bit of damage. Forces the player back. Up goes Derek. Full blind, and Bartek takes advantage of him. Derek swinging around the corner before he could even see. And just like that, it's 10 to 5. Mazalai with an absolutely outstanding half, considering the game that's in it. This is why I was saying it. You can see Mazalai maybe take a map. And if they do it this convincingly, I don't know if I fully believe in that 2-1. Then We need to see Brand step it up. I do believe their T-side is going to be better. The problem is... The fact that it's gone 10-5 means that they need to show up massively in this pistol round. If they lose the pistol, well, if they at least don't manage to get a buy, a uh, plant, excuse me, and lose the pistol, they are screwed. At that point, Mazalai are so far ahead, it is an, it's not even an uphill battle anymore, it's, it's a climb. Okay, not a bad start. I mean, they were setting up for smokes and flashes in towards the site. Sugu gets completely blinded up. And we'll capitalize off it and... Oh, my God. That climb is being made a little bit easier with the bomb plant and potentially the pistol round. Just two players left. I, I, I don't see Mazalai retaking this, but they still have a kit, so they can play a lot of time. And Nuez has been able to get so much ground, able to peek out towards the right-hand side where Poppy's going to be waiting. He's trying to bait Jaw in and... To be fair, Jaws playing this pretty well. Not overfacing. I think Zilkenberg just ditched away because he has a kit. And that will be it. That'll be the clean round here for Bren. So they will bounce back. They get the six on the board. But they still have a long ways to go to get into the lead. Uh, this should at least allow them to close in that gap a little bit, right? We're probably looking at a 10 to 7. The eco coming through from Mazalai to allow it up. If they take a force buy, I think they're throwing away the lead that they have. At this point, I would rather them just take it all the way. But no, they're going to go in for the, the pistols. I don't know. Uh, I guess they're up against SMGs for the most part. Brennan are likely to pull out. I mean, we've seen teams in this tournament take four, sometimes five SMGs. At that point, coming up against pistols and armor, you're actually at a pretty big disadvantage. But no, Brennan have got the big brains. They've come in with the rifles, and that doesn't speak volumes for what we can see from Mazalai. Flash over on mid as they take control. The range duels always in their favor in a round like this. Papi Chulo. Leading the charge straight down middle. He's got a MAC-10 in hand, looking to force some high reward fights with relatively low risk as well. Shingo gets forced out of connector. The Molotov landing be just like perfectly between two smokes. I'm curious if they actually do take mid away completely from Azalei, even in the gun rounds. Oh, we saw Wit struggle dealing with middle. Struggling to hit shots. Silkenberg's been been alright. Hasn't been too bad. Nothing to write home about just yet. But he still has a while to go before he can even afford that weapon. But they've been allowing Pro to get up towards short. He gets dinked up and killed off by the CZ. Gun's not rescued. I think they're trying to barrel him before he can pick it up. Darius is going to jump down. He's going to get one. But in the meantime, Ooh. Zilkenberg gets one. Now he's over towards the A site. I think that's the, uh, I should, sorry, I was towards B, but that's, I think, the only kill they're going to get. Sugu left alone now with the CZ and a smoke. 
maybe recover a weapon. Oh, there's not going to be many uh, great things to recover here in Tord's Kitchen. But he has Kevlar, like, and, hel and the head armor. I would say just run away. I think I'd agree with you here. Even sit outside the site and try to rush in and pick up a weapon afterwards, but I think he's being calm too that both players died in short. And so that's probably where he wants to go afterwards. Problem is Branner exiting there with two. He's hearing the player up above. Maybe that's another opportunity. Maybe that's an exit kill. In goes Papi Chulo. Sohoku almost looks away at the wrong moment. Happy trying to bait him out. If he's down below, up he goes with the CZ in hand, trying to get the jump shots. It's not happening. At least he does manage to save it over. I don't really see a way that that goes better for him. But there's your problem, Jason. You know, when you take that force by and you lose, now it's 10-7, likely to be 10-8. And Bren are already right back in the driver's seat. They've built up momentum with the rifles that they bought up. Yes, they lose a couple players, but they still manage to save over three out of four, which is decent enough. Now they get a chance to farm a little bit of extra cash. And we'll see what can be done. I still want to see the gun rounds out of Mazalai, though. Mm -hmm. I, I, in the T half, oh my god, there's a CT in the smoke. Big play. Big play by Sogu. He's behind them, but they're rotating. They're going B. Going B with the bomb. Even though only one player left now, they've realized exactly what's happening. He runs out of ammo. Two kills. It's it's okay. I mean, I think Mazalai did decently to find that many, considering it was such a low buy. They had the scout on Zilkenberg as well, not really netting a whole lot. But he's able to get an AWP out, and this is where he can do some serious damage. You would hope. Th these are the two teams, though, Jason, really, where I feel like the Alpers just don't deliver i know they're doing okay but up against each other i expect one of them to dominate considering the weaker performances we've seen game on game for both yeah i mean you put them against an annihilation and yeah well i don't think they're gonna be able to compete at least in terms of the amount of fragging power they're gonna provide for their teams mm -hmm. that's not an opping duel that's just an execution yeah what i did want to say before in the last round was that you know the, the gun rounds in towards the the first half especially towards the end it seemed like Mazalai were just winning the 1v1s over and over and we haven't had like the true gun round till this round come in for them so if they can continue that pace from before i still don't think they're out just yet and only being two rounds in the lead lose this one especially the op that you invested for zilkenberg it could continue to be tough smoke's being thrown in no smoke towards ct though i'm a little bit worried for that flashbang comes through They even have they even have the smoke for CT. No, they're they're out of util at this point. It's a very light utility buy. Remaining in the last minute. Are they faking the a fake? So I think the idea is to open up a bit of space for Pro. They've managed to seize the angle with the flash is over. Zilk left himself into the CT spawn. Now here comes the connector play. Papi Chulo loses a lot of health, but he's still alive for now. As Ja frags out and puts it in a four versus two, he looks for a little bit more, sees the player on the right, Nuez is gone, and this is about as clean as can be. Only losing one player, low health on Papi, who just swings on out, playing like a CCTV camera there. He was trying to get a bit of information, but instead he gets himself a kill. And the problem is, yeah, I tend to eight. I, I agree, Mazalai are not out of the game, and they still aren't. The only problem is that the advantage that they gained in the beginning, or actually in the end of the previous half, now starts to fade away. We go back to the point about Bren being more solid individuals. That's where the problem starts to emerge. You can see why we're worried coming into half time. Uh, you know, if Mazalai win the pistol, don't allow Bren to plant a bomb, all of a sudden you could be looking at a 12 or 13 to 5. But instead, they're yet to come off their starting point in this half as Bren easily catch up on them now against pistols. It should be easy. It should be 10 to 10. But their economy, it, I mean, it's not huge. It's not a massive lead. So they do need to... Tr oh, the molly didn't even land, but Zilk was preemptively rotating. So yeah, the, the thing is, they're, uh, for Mazalai, they need to find a couple kills. It's two to three in this round. Three, ideally. I don't expect them to win, but as long as they can find three frags, they'll be happy. Or I'll be happy with them. The thing is, for people who are thinking that, you know, all these casters are biased, will Ren beat Tiger, the, the best Mongolian team? based off of, you know, the road to Rio. So you would imagine they should be able to beat, like, the... I, I want to say, like, the third best team. Because D13 looked way better than Mazalai when we saw them in their matches. Mm -hmm. 
Not the Chulo though. Oh, he's in such a good position. They don't know he's here. First, second. I mean, yeah, just the pistols, but they're gonna have to sight again. The bomb would be top of mid though. If Wits goes down, he might not have a chance. And there's gonna be a play over towards Connector. That's gonna be Nuas. He's got the Deagle. At least sorry, towards short. As we see Witch try to push Connector, and Wits will get the kill. So that should be a safe plant coming up. Might as well are doing it. They're doing the damage, doing what we want. The AK in the hands of Zilkenberg. Things could definitely continue to go their way. One more kill and I'm happy. Bartek not able to get it done. Papi Chulo's here for the fight. And Zilk pushed back by the flash. Might just go in for the save. He's not even being allowed to though. Derek already on the quick flank. We're watching for the push in the kitchen. And I agree. Uh, definitely when it comes to the point about Bren being the favorites. You know, they did beat Tiger. Tiger have been on very shaky ground, though. I mean, they've they have not looked uh, not true. looked solid at all. They lost to Bren. They almost lost to Beyond and Invictus. To say, you know, when people were saying, oh, this is the top team in Asia, Black came into this tournament immediately highlighting, no, they have not proven that yet. Like, he even, I think he even said himself, like, it might be a, just a fluke. But they need to consistently uh, put up that kind of performance. And so far in this tournament, okay, they are two for one. But they haven't been doing it in a fashion that's indicative of them being able to compete when they come against Vici, against Tyloo this time around. They need to improve quite a bit. We got another full buy coming through for the brand side. 10 to 10. They're tied up as Mazalai pick up a double op setup. Zilkenberg and Nuez, the ones that deploy those, and Nuez is already dead. I mean, in their, their, their first full gun round, they. they... They need to win this. They need to have a clean round. You need to be very careful. Zilkenberg, even while blinded up, gets the kill onto Jaw. I oh, can see the T's backing away, so at least keeping things even out for a piece. Mid's left completely open, however. You're seeing Machine Gun on the minimap kind of struggle to realize or to realize that and to back away in towards window where Derek's already in towards underpass. Smoke gonna come in. I think it's gonna be in towards window. Machine gun's just gonna give this one up. And technically, Derek can get in that window without making... Or, sorry. He can get in the window by himself, but it'll be making noise. So whether or not there's anyone around him to spot it out. Zogenberg with the op. As they make their way in towards Palace. There's no smokes left. All they have is the incendiary and the two flashbangs. And the CT side of Mazla have all rotated. And leave one player towards short, but that's it. All the fake. Derek over towards B. Pulling them off, but Sogu is able to take Papi Chulo down. The kills go their way. Wits only good for one, and Pro's got to do it all. He's already out. He's being watched by two. And that's the end of that story. 11 on the board for Mazalai. They manage to get themselves to buy around, but Bren have built up that little stack of cash. They'll be able to invest right here. The rifles will still come through, and so the road does not get any easier for Mazalai. They're still on the dirt track, not yet hitting the paved streets. The clean, fast rounds that result in them flying ahead of their opponents. Instead, they're still pretty much neck and neck. And with the way things have been going, you can have one solid hold when a team tries to push through a tight bomb site like that. But I want to see it repeated again and again. How are these early fights going to go? We saw Nuez get picked off with that secondary off towards B previously. This time, has a little bit more support. Bartak was even peeking in, shoulder peeking it to make sure they weren't coming around that corner. Try to bait them into Nuez's scope. Now the pixel angle being held, a flash pulls him off. They know there's a player there. Another flash through. Wits, come on. This is the second shot. Gets tagged out of there. He has to bail. And that could have been it. That could have been the opening that pulled them way ahead. But instead, Bren are forced to retreat, give up on the map control they saw towards B. And so it's going to be a late mid take for them. Tough times for Wits. Sugu. Oh no. That should have been a guaranteed kill. He jumps the gun on the shot. And Jaw loses the fight another day. The smoke is going to have a gap in it. You see Machine Gun playing around it. Looking to even push up. The incendiary going to come through. It's going to force him completely back. Head to control. Going the way of Bren. Except you see all the CTs starting to rotate back in. They're going to leave. Yeah, it's Nuez to defend the B site. With 30 seconds left on the clock. Bren are going to have to pick up the pace here. 
You have one smoke. They have two incendiaries, or sorry, two Molotovs themselves. Bartek's gonna have a smoke. New as well, but that's over towards the B side. The double op set up a heavy investment. Machine gun being spammed down. He's gonna fall. 18 seconds left to go here, Mitch, and they get the first two kills they needed, but they're being flanked from behind. Where are they gonna plant? Can somehow Sugu stop the planter? Oh, he could. It's a connector plant. No, they've managed to get it down though. He was a little bit too slow on the reaction. And the problem with that is when you allow them to plan, you're also allowing the rest of the players to go out and clear all those other angles. So when the planner stops and he realizes they've got connector, jungle, CT all pushed up, well, he's just going to turn around and go, oh, I guess I'll watch the ramp then. It's easy as can be for wits. If only people I played with are that smart. <laughs> like, oh, you've pushed CT? I'll watch CT, bro. Yeah. I got you. So, no, I just cleared it. I got you. Got you. Look at this. The money. It's gone. They got machine gun on the scout, but... I don't know where you go from here. They finally get themselves a victory. They finally get themselves, you know, back on the board. But the one round, but then they go for such a heavy investment, it's going to cost them essentially the round they're after. And Bren, the first time in this game, I'm oh, sorry, second time in this game, about to take the lead. Well, it certainly looks that way unless Zilkenberg has got the best CZ I've ever seen. He's gone to Valorant and picked up the golden gun. Start one-tapping people. Sadly, that's not the way things are going to go. 12 to 11, Bren take the lead, and as we said, you know, their T side was definitely going to be something to be feared when they swapped over. Call it bias if you want. I would call it having a brain. You know that, obviously, Bren, as better individuals, something that we've all highlighted coming into the start of this game. Where do individuals perform? It tends to be the T side, and when they come in with their team play, with their individual ability, that's where Mazalai start to fall apart a little oh, bit. Oh, they're going quick, eh? They rush uh -huh. straight through Pala. Sorry to interrupt you there, Zilkenberg. Oh, dude. I mean, how does he get more than one kill? Oh. He gets a second before Jaw does come around the corner and take it down. He's actually continue to push in towards CT, smoke it off. They have the smoke set down towards stairs and jungles, so it's not like they can peek in to stop the bomb from being planted. And such a fast plant coming through. The two players completely blinded up towards CT spawn. Jaw wants to beat this flashbang as well to assist it. He pushes in. He gets the spray a little bit wild, but eventually the kill. And Papa Chilo is able to pick off Nuez. And the last two players are coming from Ceres. It's down to the two on two. Wits has got the off, but he finally starts hitting some shots. He gets the first, but he needs the last to close out this round. Machine gun's being huge for Mazalai so far, but the shot from Wits confirms the round. 13 to 11 as Bren take it. And close in on that victory will separate themselves from Mazalai. It should just be a light buy from Mazalai. I don't expect a full investment. They can't really afford it. There'd be no AWP. It'd be very little. I gotta say, Zilgenberg impressed me with that second shot. The player was coming up close right. He had no way to really know that. But a big mistake by Sogu. In there in CT, you see him push forward while Nuez is nowhere nearby. He's clearing the angle, so he's peeking into players that can very easily be watching him. He, only when he gets flashed does he decide to go back, at which point it's way too late. And obviously, Nuez couldn't get the trade in time, even picked off uh, from the site after he found it eventually. I mean, you really need to have that better spacing when you're going in for the retake. You have a very finite resource of players that you can't just go throwing away. Hmm. Hard to be a Mazalai fan at the moment. I mean, they look good. Ten rounds, T-side. I, I was fairly impressed. They've only gotten one in the last nine. It seems like we're going to have a set execute towards A. I don't know if they're fully going to commit to this push. It is a, a big four-man stack here. To defend against this. I wonder if they're just trying to sell a fake another time. Smoke's all coming down. Pretty standard. They're going to come through. They're up against just, just the pistols. They even have a max 7 for machine gun. I'm not sure how I missed the Suga's burning up. They're going to hear that. He's going to fall without even getting a single point of damage. Bartek, though, with the Deagle. He's going to get one, and that was a fantastic shot coming through as he had the smoke there. Oh, Nuez. Do they clear it? Oh, they don't. He's got a chance. He wants to get more than one. He's being spotted now. At least manages to deliver that. 
Nothing hurts more, Jason, than seeing a position where a player has got the perfect play. He's being sneaky. And because of a random flick by by someone turning to look at ramp where his teammates are, for no reason, you end up getting exposed and killed. Well, they changed that, that you can't spin and defuse, but they, True. they didn't change you can spin and plant. Well, there you go. I don't think many people do it. The... Uh, you know, like, no, I think that that's the second worst thing that can happen in that situation. The worst is when you're sat in a corner, like one or two players run past, and the third guy checks it. You're right? like, why? Yeah. Why are you doing that? Stop. But you know, it's, it's not because they're thinking you might be there. It's because they're so dumb they don't realize that their teammates have cleared that. Sounds, sounds like you've had this happen to you from personal experience. Too many times, Jason. <laughs> oh, Barb, what? Wow. Doesn't even see him. Hits him through a smoke. So the pace being picked up yet again. They're going to be hitting onto the A site. The utility not being thrown down, though. No smokes to cover anything off. They're hoping that Wits can hit shots to cover up multiple positions. Ja, he's got to take down the man towards CT. It's going to be Sugo. He's going to fall. They can now plant the bomb. But Wits has it. He's going to sneak over. Look at the spam coming through. That damage! They haven't seen a single player there. They spammed him through, and they're both on about 20 HP. You can't. There's no way you win this as Bren. You shouldn't win this as Bren. Surely not. And you don't win this as Good. Bren. Good. I think I'd lose my mind if it. That's at least going to be 14 to 12. Mazzalai keep themselves alive, keep themselves in it. Bartak on the back of a huge performance as well. I mean, his short hold there was spectacular. Look at this. Pop through the wall. Pro is already very low from the machine gun spam earlier. The bar attacks just through the wall, headshotting everyone. You'd love to see it. Yeah, who needs to see people if you can just shoot them through walls? It's like we were talking about earlier, right? You, they, they can see the, the x-ray, right? <laughs> yeah. Rebuy up, though, for Bren. They, they've, I mean, they have enough money to buy yet again after this round. So Mazalai really have to put on a clinic here and take rounds back to back. And then finally break the economy and then be up to 15 off of that. If you imagine they can take these next rounds, these next two. And they very well could get themselves on to map point and take it. Go on to overpass with a one map lead and more importantly, finally get their first map victory under the belt. Machine gun. And this shot comes through. There's no fossil. There's nothing to stop him. Jaw. I, you sh What? You shouldn't win that. Don't tell me he's in his second as well. He spots Phantom short. He doesn't expect the other player towards the B site, and Bartek almost fluffs it. So down to the four on four. Nice push out of Zilkenberg. And even Sugu getting the kill. Stops him from taking that full control of the A site. And we're going to continue on for a while then. Mazalai. Four versus two. Time's running down. They haven't spotted a whole lot. They have no idea where these players are going. Oh my god, they've just walked right past each other. Poppy. No, he didn't even see him on the turnaround. What is that? They've actually just chips in the night. Oh, God. And as they push out, there's no way that Poppy Chula is going to be expected to be towards Palace. They can kill Zilkenberg. And Zilk's like, wait, what? I thought you came through, Palace. Oh, that's embarrassing. But the thing is, Poppy won't know about the ramp play either. So <laughs> this has worked out pretty terribly for Bren. 20 seconds. He's got to go get it. I doubt he even looks at ramp. This should be the, the freest kill of Sogu's life. And it's Machine Gun that takes in the end. You don't see that every day, do you? It wasn't even 4 by 3 It was just the perfect blocking of the pillars as they walk around. I mean, I'd be I'd be pissed if I was Zilkenberg there. Like, how did you just push through Palace? And this guy kills me from Palace. <laughs> What's oh, going God. on? Tactical timeout coming in for Bren. They have money to buy up again. This is a very important round. This is a very crucial round. They lose this. Mazalai goes to 14. Then they don't have a lot of money in the round after. They have to force up. Mazalai could go to 15 off of that. And then you're just playing for overtime. It's definitely been a, a bit of a back and forth one. Um... And in a way, it's sort of a shame that we saw 
Might as well like, get off that poor start. We could easily be going on a map too with a with a one to zero for them if this second half how they just have won the pistol. It was like we were saying that was the only chance really for Brent to stick into a position where they they could reasonably do this. They took back the lead. They're close to conceding it. As I come in with a double op setup, machine gun taking that secondary, and he is a force to be reckoned with on this sniper. We saw it before. I think it's arguably the one that stood out more so than Zilkenberg in the oping department, even the spiping the secondary. And moving towards middle, both ops were focused up on that position for a while. Now just machine gun. He's over on short, not playing aggressively, only looking for the connector play. And boost up. Straight well, through the window. This is nice. Mm -hmm. They have no one watching this. They have no one watching middle at all. Sogu's got that responsibility as they cross over to site. The smokes were blocking him for a little bit. Oh, he went greedy. He went to go and peek out towards Sandwich. That's really Zilkenberg's job. And as he falls, now they know that the window is closed off, right? Those players can't come in through there without breaking the metal grater. Ja. Not just smoke CT. Why are you fighting it? Didn't they, they have did. a smoke? No, so they flashed around I it they had because one. they hadn't got one. So it was an okay play. It even sort of got blinded. The flash was just a tiny bit too shallow. Well, again, they still don't know they're all coming from CT considering the vent hasn't been broken yet. Papa Chula needs to hit his shots. Pro as well. Poppy's going to miss. Someone needs to start connecting. It's going to be Pro off the bat. Pro gets himself two. Derek gets one as well. And that's all on Machine Gun. And speaking of money, they don't have much to spend in the following round. This could be round 15 for Bren. And potentially the map. Oh, no. He switches away the last second. It's a game of timing, really, isn't it, Jason, this time? On this run, we had a crazy mirage previously. Now it's uh, not so much because of a lack of strategic depth or wild gameplay. But the universe conspiring against them. Same with Sogu, you know, the smoke fades. As they do, he starts to peek in towards Sandwich, make sure no one's coming up close. The second he turns away from that angle, boom, he's shot in the head. Player swings out on it. One more to go for Bren. 15 to 13. Could be the same scoreline as what we saw in one of our earlier games. Shot, not going to connect. Oh, which was blocked by his teammate as well. Takes a little bit of damage, and that SMG only serves to close in the distance a little bit more. Derek's waiting for it with new as Oh, he's turned away. That's such terrible timing. They wanted to flash on the corner for Derek to peek, but instead, they just allow new as to find the opening duel. He doesn't get the gun, though, most importantly. I mean, I guess the, the kill is the most important part, but as a silver lining, they don't get the gun. Two SMGs. Uh, it was on one health. He might as well just be a fly at the moment. Smoke comes in towards mid window. John's still holding towards connector for middle. They're looking to make an A play, and Sugu is looking to push in. Oh no, it's Wits coming around the corner. If Wits isn't pre aim the shot, this should be a kill for Sugu. Going to the final round. Two on five. I'm not a believer. No, I, I don't think so. Pro's got to do it all. And peaked in by three all at once. That's the end of that. 15 to 14. Look at the money for the T side. It is not pretty. They can get an off out. If they want to. I don't I don't think I'd really go for if anything. I'd probably take the AK, chuck it over to Poppy. Yeah, I mean, if Wits gets that kill, good chance they can take the round. But the Optus hasn't seemed to work out really too well in general for, I'd say everyone but Machine Gun, but I can still think of a lot of missed shots out of Machine Gun. And they, they had to force up for Mazali, like they had two SMGs. And now they have everything that they could possibly want. Let's see, mm -hmm. Bren. Well, two AKs, two Mac 10s. Maybe they're gonna rush out of B site. Maybe split. The Chulo gonna be looking to, I guess, lead the charge here for his team. <clears throat> Derek just gonna peek out and towards mid. 
And again, that incendiary used to just slow the pace down. They have two players here to defend. And Machine Gun in middle who looks to come over to join as well. Autop comes down. Smoking to clear that one out. And they have to start hitting some shots now. As Bartek's going to get the first. Nuez is here from short to help lock this one down. Derek's going to get one. But Derek comes in from behind. He gets himself a quick two-piece. The bomb going to be planted. And just like that with a minimal buy. We're in the after plant situation. Zilkerberg, he hasn't been spotted out. But now he shoots off. And he gets finished off by Derek. This man is single-handedly saving this map here for Bren. Sugu left alone now in the one-on-three. And I think they might have been able to do it just in the nick of time. You got a smoke, you got a flash, but you have no health. And Derek, the quad kill in the final round of regulation, saves the round for Bren. And there you go. 16 to 14. Definitely didn't make it easy for themselves. That's for damn sure. But pulling it across the line, an insane performance from Poppy 